can get started uh, though and good afternoon everybody and welcome to the advanced refactoring in Swift session. Today I would like to talk about refactoring process and there should be but closed. Today I will tell you about refactoring but I will emphasize on tools and modifications we can do in order to fulfill our own needs and that would be based on my own experience. So in today's speech, I will cover general refactoring information, how to write and add own refactoring actions to Swift language, and how to write own refactoring tool to cover most pretentious requests. An idea to work on improving refactoring actions arose when I started work on my master's thesis. There was a need to find references to methods or properties with some conditions which was unable to do using default refactoring actions based on regular expressions. Then that idea was extended to perform complex source code analysis and refactoring, which can be done on automatic basis. So an idea to create a tool which will perform source code analysis and refactoring based on representation of code in knowledge base uh, came up in my PhD thesis. And there is a but close. But from the very beginning of the work, there should be a tool which will parse the code in a specific way. There starts the work I would like to share with you today. I'm sure each of us has knowledge of refactoring. But before diving deep, I would like to talk about some basic terms and definitions, which would be great to revise, and they will help everybody to be on the same page. To start with, Let's revise what refactoring is. Refactoring is a process of altering source code in order to remove anti-patterns, increase the ability for automatic testing, further product support, and code readability without adding new functionality. So in other words, refactoring is a systematic process of improving code without creating new functionality that cleans the code and simplifies the architecture. The process of refactoring the source code is to gradually refactor its parts as well as run automated test suites after each change. These steps are key elements of refactoring that make the process safe and predictable. Some general terms. Dirty code is a code written as a result of insufficient experience, short development deadlines, lack or incorrectness of management and code abbreviations that are understandable only to the developer who was writing the code. Clean code is a code that is easy to read, understand, and maintain. Clean code makes software development predictable and improves product quality. The aim of refactoring is to improve the non-functional properties of the software, which is to turn dirty code into clean without changing functionality, as well as reduce complexity, increase scalability, and organize code openness and clarity, which will be useful for those who will support the, that source code. Code smells are indicators of problems that can be solved during refactoring. Such problems are easy to spot and resolve, but they can only be symptoms that indicate significant global problems in the code. What is Code Smells Catalog? Code Smells Catalog is a collection of well known anti patterns, which are the most common problems in code. Their description helps to identify presence of weak areas in source code, and it provides common techniques to resolve the problem. So let's review some of them. Bloaters are code, methods, and classes that have increased to such gargantuan proportions that they are hard to work with. Object-oriented abusers are incomplete or incorrect application of object-oriented programming principles. Change preventers mean that if you need to change something in one place in your code, you have to make many changes in other places. A dispensable is something pointless and unneeded whose absence would make the code cleaner and more efficient and easier to read and understand. Couplers contribute to excessive couplings between classes or show what happens if coupling is replaced by excessive delegation. When to refactor? 
the moment when the code needs refactoring is determined for the most part by the smells of the code. For example, a method is too large or almost completely duplicates another method. Once the problem area has been identified, one of the refactoring techniques can be applied to it so that the code has the same behavior, but a different shape that does not fall under the anti-pattern to be modified. Delay or inability to perform refactoring leads to the accumulation of technical debt in the project, which negatively affects the quality of the project, as well as the effectiveness of its further maintenance and, of course, development. There are also a big number of code quality metrics. Those metrics evaluate presence of anti-patterns in the code, and based on result, a decision to perform refactoring or not is made. Such systems as Sonacube can measure those metrics. And by the way, you may know that implementing a Sonacube metrics collection is a cross-company initiative now. During the analysis of the source code, an in-depth study of the code for presence of anti-patterns, vulnerabilities, and weaknesses is carried out. Such metrics allow to decide whether to pay attention to a particular place in the program during refactoring or improve an existing functionality. Actually, there are qualitative and quantitative characteristics of code quality. Main qualitative characteristics are extensibility, code maintenance, clarity, and documentation. Main quantitative characteristics are weighted microfunctions, hosted complexity measurement, and cyclomatic complexity. There is a big number of developed qualitative and quantitative characteristics to estimate code quality. Some of them are based on descriptiveness and meaning of code itself. Others take into consideration functional abilities. How to refactor. The refactoring process involves successive steps to achieve the desired result. The sequence of steps to solve a problem in the code is described by the refactoring technique. Each technique has its advantages and disadvantages, so it is necessary to pay enough attention to what technique is used and whether it is appropriate to use it in this particular case. There is a big number of refactoring techniques identified which help to remove anti-patterns in code. Most refactoring tools try to develop automatic refactoring actions for those techniques. And for example, you may know that almost all refactoring tools have extract method, extract function, and rename functionality. On this slide, you can see most common and used techniques listed. There are two main categories of benefits that refactoring provides. The first one is possibility of support. It is easier to fix problems when the source code is easy to read and the idea of the author of the code is clear. This can be achieved by reducing the number of monolithic methods by dividing them into separate, clearly named autonomous units. And the second one is extensibility. It is easier to expand the capabilities of a software product if it is designed using well-known patterns that are easily recognizable. It also makes the product architecture more flexible. Refactoring is applied to the code in which the need for such an operation is identified. Before refactoring, the tasks and goals to be achieved when making changes using refactoring techniques are set. The main tasks are Reduce code smells, improve code readability, increase code scalability, increase cohesion and decrease coupling, decrease the number of defects, decrease the amount of unused or dead code, decrease dependencies, and of course, increase the stability. Cohesion is an indication of the connections within the module. This is the concept of an intermodule. Cohesion comes in many forms but high model cohesion is an indication of a good code. Coupling is an indication of the connections between modules. This is the concept of the intermodule. Coupling also takes many forms, but low model coupling is best for software code. Actually, I highly recommend to visit a website dedicated to refactoring and design principles. It is Refactoring Guru. 
it has a lot of useful information, which is written in understandable way. So after brief overview of refactoring and its pros and forms, we can move forward towards specifics of writing and usage of refactoring actions in Swift. By the way, any questions so far? Awesome, so let's move forward. So starting from Xcode 9, IDE includes a brand new refactoring engine. It can alter code locally in a single Swift source file or globally, for example, by renaming a method or property that occurs in multiple files and even different languages. The local refactoring logic is fully implemented in the compiler and source kit and is available in open source Swift repository. Therefore, anyone who is interested in adding their refactoring methods can do so. Let's take a look at how refactoring can be implemented and how to use it in Xcode. There is an example of possible refactoring actions in Xcode editors context menu present on this slide, like localized string. There is an important note to remember. There are two types of refactorings available in Xcode, local and global. Global refactoring is a proprietary feature of Xcode itself. So there is no access to source code and no possibility to modify those actions. Thus, local refactoring is a part of Swift language. It can be used outside Xcode and easily adopted or modified. So before we get into the details of how to use the parts of the Swift compiler that are responsible for converting source code to AST, abstract syntax tree, to write functionality for refactoring, we need to understand the compilation process as a whole. At the highest level of abstraction, a compilation can be represented as a series of steps that transform a Swift program from, from one view to another. Each representation is designed for a different purpose. Let's concentrate on the first several main parts that convert source code into an abstract syntax tree, so AST. After receiving the AST, the refactoring embedded in the compiler tools is performed, and in other words, compiler code describing possible refactoring methods is applied to the source code. An API that allows us to work with AST is used to refactor code as needed. The code describing the refactoring is added to a special file, which is later compiled and becomes a part of the language compiler tools. In order to create a refactoring tool, we need to understand AST and be able to work with it. It all starts with Lexin which is the process of splitting the source code into tokens according to the grammar of the language. In Swift, tokens are language keywords, parentheses, literals, identifiers, and columns. The lexer performs parsing, which does not describe the meaning of a particular token, but determines whether it is a parenthesis, identifier, period, and so on. After formation by a lexer, the tokens are passed to the parser, its purpose is to create an abstract syntax tree that would define the role of a particular marker or group of tokens. An important feature of Swift AST is that because it is derived from tokens, it is directly related to the source code. So that means that we can get a link to a location in the source file that represents a specific AST node. Without this information, it would be even uh, impossible to rename identifiers, perform moves, simplify methods, and perform other actions. AST, which the parser generates with the token, lacks some information regarding types. This is because those connections are so difficult to determine, mainly because many of them require parsing and analysis of all the source code before it is possible to even determine whether a particular construction such as method overload is valid and what it refers to. Correcting this is the responsibility of semantic analysis, which uses a type checking mechanism 
to determine all relationships between types. Type definition is a difficult, computationally capacious and iterative process full of boundary cases. Probably all developers who use Swift know that in famous compilation error, the expression was too complex to solve in a reasonable time, which haunted earlier versions of Swift and may still appear from time to time. The system of solving expressions is what semantic an analysis uh, revolves around. Once the AST has been finalized with certain types and references to the source code, it becomes possible to refactor in terms of code processing. I mean, checking comp compliance, repetitions, required calls, and etc., and replacing the source code with the required one. An abstract syntax tree, AST, is a graph in which the vertices are operators and leaves are operands. There are three main types of nodes in Swift AST, declarations, expressions, and operators. They correspond to the three entities used in the Swift language itself. The names of functions, structures, parameters are declarations. Expressions are entities that return value. For example, function invocation. Operators are the parts of language that define the code execution flow, but do not return values such as if or do catch. On this slide, you can see a brief representation of how AST looks like for a small piece of code. You can see the nested structure of AST, keywords that describe features like import declarations, function declaration, access specifiers, type, etc. So you can see import declaration here, func declaration, interface type, and access specifier. It is internal right now. Also, each piece contains information about reference to the source code. It is defined in range property. So AST is a formalized representation of raw source code written with the help of keywords. Refactoring tool can only operate with formalized representations. So AST is the one and only milestone. Refactoring is initiated by a cursor selection in the editor. According to how they are initialized, refactorings are classified as cursor and range. The purpose of cursor-based refactoring is uniquely specified by the cursor position in the Swift source file, such as renaming. In contrast, range-based refactoring requires a start and end position to indicate its purpose, such as method extraction. To facilitate the implementation of these two categories, Swift's source kit provides pre-analyzed results called result cursor info and uh, result range info to answer questions about the cursor, position, or range in the source Swift file. So the first picture displays this range information refactoring, and the second picture displays cursor-based information refactoring. Let's talk about the way of adding refactoring actions in Swift. Firstly, Swift sources should be cloned and built. From my experience, it may take up to four and five hours of building and 128 gigabytes of memory. Secondly, knowledge of C++ is required. And lately, it is needed to have a lot of time and patience as there is no documentation or help. Let's take a look at the example of implementing Swift refactoring action, and it would be based on existing localized string refactoring. Hope you use that refactoring in your development. To implement string localization refactoring, we must first declare this refactoring in the refactoring kinds file. That's the first line of code. Once the setting is made, there is a need to implement two functions that will show Xcode. The first, when it is necessary to show the refactoring action and it is named is applicable method. And the second one is which code change to apply when the user invokes this refactoring action. And that is the perform change method. In this is applicable method, 
we check for presence of string literal in selected info. Note that you may think of that localization is applicable for range, but it is also can be done based on the position of a cursor inside string literal. So the result whether refactoring is applicable or not is based on the string literal, the string literal has uh, the interpolation. So the line five, right? But that's actually not a real API. We need to write a lot more code in order to check that. And please note uh, how cursor info is used here. For example, on the line number three, we have check for the kind of the expression start, right? As for me, perform change method looks easier. We just find the starting location, like getting start location, and we need to insert some code here, like an S localized string. The same is done with the ending of the location, and we are inserting just the ending uh, trailing symbols here. The same approach applies to range refactorings. First line of code declares that extract expression refactoring is initiated by range selection, that range refactoring uh, keyword. Uh, then internally named extract expression symbol, then it uses extract expression string as a display name to be displayed in Xcode, for example, and a stable extract dot exp uh, key for service communication purposes, that's for communication between the source kit, Xcode, editor, and other services to show when this refactoring should be available and how to apply it. We also need to implement is applicable and perform change methods, but with the slight difference that the input parameter is resolved range info instead of result cursor info. As any other software, refactoring actions should be tested. On the slide, there are two pictures provided. The first one is a test of is applicable method. Test suite is a specific script which parses commands in Swift code and executes stated action. The first test checks whether a refactoring action provided is applicable to stated code above. The second picture shows the test for perform change method. The test accepts position an output file which to compare result from refactoring action applied to provided chunk of code. In order to go through described flow and get hands-on experience, I took a feature ticket from Swift Jira board and implemented it. Also, I went through PR process, so my changes are reviewed by Swift peers and appear in one of Swift version. My PR was reviewed and approved. As of Swift 5.3, there is a new refactoring action at credible conformance. My personal experience of contributing to Swift show that it is really hard to get someone to review your changes and but before they should be automatically tested and that test should be also started by a Swift peer. And this process may take up to several months, but also it showed that it is possible to add changes which are needed and developers will benefit from. On this slide, you may see how adequate conformance action works. First, there is an entity which does not conform to equitable protocol. By leaving a cursor on an entity name and performing right click, refactoring context menu appears with the list of all applicable refactoring actions. Before that, Swift checks which actions are applicable by executing is applicable method we've seen before. When the action is selected, like adequate conformance, perform change method is invoked and source code in editor is updated. You can see the result on the slide. That was a really brief overview of what is going under the surface when we apply refactoring actions. Such a complex and inflexible way of adding refactoring action made me think of another easier way of implementing refactoring tool, which will give more flexibility and freedom. My research led me to Swift Syntax library. Swift Syntax is a Swift package created by Apple that provides a set of Swift bindings on top of Lib Syntax, 
which contains the implementation, structure, and logic for working with first source code. Lib syntax implements data structures and algorithms for working with Swift syntax, striving to be safe, correct, and intuitive to use. The library relies on immutable stream safe data structures, a complete representation of a source and structured editing tools. In other words, the library provides the basic blocks needed to be securely and reliably analyzed and added the syntax structure of Swift source code with a clear and simple API. Lib syntax uh, divides the abstract syntax tree representation into several parts. The first one is syntax or syntax nodes. It is a representation of the syntax available to the public API. Then there is a raw syntax. It is internal raw static data repository for all syntax objects. It stores data such as token type and displays the structure of the subtree. Then raw token syntax. It's a special case of raw syntax for displaying terminals in grammar. Then we have a trivia. It represents all syntax parts that have no semantic meaning for the source code, like spaces, line breaks, and commands. And the last but not the least is a syntax data. It wraps raw syntax objects, giving them additional information. A pointer to an ancestor, the position of the node in the ancestor code, all cached descendants. Understanding of these blocks at the designation is vital for working with high level API. Swift syntax has a number of main high level APIs, which allow to go through AST to read and to alter it. Syntax Factory provides a simple and user friendly interface for creating any syntax node in a single line of code. Instead of using many constructors for each syntax code, the factory class is used. As on this slide, we are creating any keyword and blank declaration, just stating syntax factory make any keyword and we would have this any keyword uh, declared. Each syntax node has with methods that allow you to create nodes from other nodes by changing the properties defined in with. Because Swift syntax nodes support the concept of immutability, with creates a new object similar to the one on which the with method was called, but with the specified part changed. So for example, on this slide, we create unknown declaration, but with something added before it like with lit in trivia and something in the trivia, trivia variable. With syntax visitor, we can work through the syntax tree. This is useful when we need to get some information from the source code and perform an analysis based on it. After performing the work, the method returns the type of continuation of the execution, whether to visit the descendants nodes or not. For example, on this slide, we are declaring visit method, which is invoked each time an extension node in NST is found. So you may see that the node type is extension declaration syntax. But then we check the presence of the public access modifier by checking the modifiers to be equal to public keyword. And do not want to go through nested AST nodes in this extension because we are returning the skip children value. Syntax Rewriter allows us to modify the structure of a tree by overriding the required method and returning a new or a modified node from it based on the necessary rules. Please note, all nodes in the tree are immutable, so we do not need to modify an existing node. Instead, to change the syntax, we must create a new node via the with method and return it to replace the current one. On this slide, we are changing each string literal to be a cat Unicode symbol. So you see we are accepting token syntax, checking it to be a string literal, and then we are returning the same token with the same kind, but replacing it with the cat symbol. Let's take a closer look at visit methods. 
there are a bunch of visit messages defined in a syntax visitor. They have difference in the node parameter. On the screen, you can see that current visit message accepts only class declaration, class declaration syntax type for the node. That means that this method will be invoked only to work with class declarations. Then return type determines whether children nodes of the current one will be visited. Also, there is a usage of source location converter, which helps to identify the place of current node in source code. Similar to syntax visitor methods, visit methods of syntax rewriter accept different types of nodes, like class declaration one stated on the screen. Contrary, visit methods of syntax rewriter return modified node. In this case, syntax factory is used to create an identifier of the class with custom name. Then, this API is used on current node to create similar one, but with changed identifier. Then the result with a new node is returned. And please note that we need to return a result of invocation of the same visit method of superclass as current visit method is overriding it. To conclude, I would like to point out several key moments. Refactoring is an integral part of development process. Usage of automatic tools may help to cope with routines. There is a possibility to alter existing refactoring to meet specific needs or even to write a custom tool. There are two types of refactoring actions, based on location of cursor and selected range. Swift syntax is a very powerful library which wraps Apple's leap syntax, which is used in compiler. There is no need to write own parser if it is possible to use a native one. All refactoring stuff do not have documentation at all. So there is a need to play everything by ears. So that's all what I wanted to tell you today. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.